Hello everyone, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Uh, it's the end of January now. It's the time of the year that we gather our apple scions and thought I'd just give a little bit of a little bit of a video about what we do. First thing we want to talk about is the type of wood to use. We want to always use a, a one year old stock that's about the size of a pencil. You don't want anything any smaller. And you want to be able to, you can tell between the one year old right here and where the two year old starts. And what we want to do is come right above a bud and we want to cut this thing off diagonally like that. And then when we, uh, when we cut our scions, we want them to be at least, I like mine. Now, I'm not going to say everybody. I choose the ones that have the buds pretty close together on them. And I like mine to be, I don't know, probably 10 to 12 inches long when I gather them. I don't like to use anything too small up in the tops because they just don't have enough carbohydrates and sugar in them to uh, survive. What we do is we'll just lay them to the side right now. And we'll, this tree is in need of serious heavy pruning. Another thing I thought I would mention is you don't want to get... Uh, you don't want to get scion wood that the buds are too sunk back into the wood. You want to make sure the buds are already swelling out a little bit. I'll, I'll show you one here. This in here, you can see how the buds are starting to swell out on the wood. That's the kind of stuff I like to use because they have a tendency to just do better and hold up better and they they graft and they take the graft a whole lot a whole lot better that's the type I like I like to keep mine about the size of a pencil good healthy stock there I want to show you another problem we have here with our apple trees is and it's a wildlife issue. You can see here how the woodpeckers, they come in here and they peck holes all in our trees. Uh, this is a little woodpecker that when he pecks this hole, it lets sap run out of the tree and then little insects feed on the sap and he comes back and, and he gathers the insects out of there and he has really done a lot of damage to our tree this year so we're going to have to figure out some way to eradicate this problem here on the homestead. It's just another one of the things that you have to look at when you're doing apple trees and, and having an apple orchard. There's always going to be some sort of wildlife issue that that causes okay, problems. Okay everyone, we're, we're back into the, our, our room here. What we're doing is we're taking our scion wood and I just, I know this may not be orthodox or however you want to say it, but uh, I put a drop of Elmer's glue on the ends of my sign wood it's just something I learned years ago from an old elderly lady that was teaching me a little bit about this I put a little just a little bit on there you don't have to have much and I'll just I'll just lay them out here because what it is they got to dry before we put them in the refrigerator I go through and just do each one of them what this does is it keeps them from dehydrating doesn't take much just a just a little bit then when you go to put that graft on a tree the top of it's already sealed so you I have a really good success rate this away the elements outside doesn't draw the moisture out of them and once we get these done what we'll do is we'll take a paper towel like this and we're gonna lay these things in a paper towel we're gonna roll them up and we're gonna take that paper towel we're gonna wet it and then we're going to put it inside a plastic bag over here and we're going to label this plastic bag. Now these grafts here, I live in South Mississippi and there's really only two apple trees that will grow here and produce abundantly. One of them is the Anna apple and the other one is the Ein Shamir from Israel. Well actually both of these are from Israel. Um, they do really really good because we just don't have any chilling hours hardly. Now I know there's some in South Florida and different places like that. There's some newer varieties out there but this is one of the test and proven varieties here off of one of these trees I may harvest 
I, one tree, it's, it, it's nothing for me to harvest two or three bushels of apples off of one tree here. So, I thought I'd just add this a little bit with you. You know, and make sure when you put these graphs in your bag that you label your bag so that you do not get the varieties confused. And if you need, if you happen to live in our area and you're wondering what will cross-pollinate with the Anna apple, we use a flowering crab apple. Or you can use a, a wild crab apple will do it. They say that the Golden Delicious will. Uh, I, I didn't have any luck with that. The only thing I've had luck with is a flowering crab apple and a wild crab apple. And pollinating the Anna apple. Now the Ein Shamir will pollinate the, uh, the Anna apple, but not as good. If you want a really, really good crop in South Mississippi, you know, you need to go with a flowering crab apple or just a wild crab apple to do the uh, pollinating of the Anna apples. All right, thank you, and we'll get back with you later. Okay, everyone, I wanted to kind of show you all some of the apple grafts that, um, that we've done here. It may not be ethical the way I do it. Uh, this is my way of doing it. It may not be the book's way of doing it, but it works for us here. This here tree that you see here, I've got to do some cleaning up on it. Get this old scale stuff that grows on it. When you don't spray chemicals, that's what you end up with. And you got to clean it up every year. But this was a golden dorset here that never, bear, never bore an apple. This tree right here is probably six years old. It has not done anything. So what I've done is I came in here and right here I put an iron shamir on here. This graft right here. Is an iron shamir graft, it's one year old. What I'm doing is I'm taking this tree and I'm making a multiple apple tree. This is an experiment, making a multiple apple tree out of it. If you can see over here, this graft right here is a one year graft. This is an anna. I grafted an anna on this side of the tree. I grafted up here high, I grafted another anna on it. I've got another graph down here of an Anna and one underneath the bottom here of an Anna. I always like to put several graphs on a tree to be sure that some of them take. And whenever they get the tree gets to growing good, I'm able to select the grafts and the limbs that I want to be the most hardy ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what kind of apples we get out of this tree. Um, now that we've grafted the Annas onto the golden dorset. We're going to see how this stock will do. If you'll notice around the bottom of the apple trees here, all of my apple trees, I plant garlic chives. Garlic chives is a real good insect deterrent, which seems to keep a lot of the bugs and problems we have away from our trees. Okay, the tree that you're looking at there, that is a golden dorset. That tree is six years old. It has never borne more than about four or five apples. So this year we're going to be cutting that tree back pretty heavy and grafting um, Anna stock onto it because the Anna does so well here. And if you come around this tree that's right here in front of me, we're going to be cutting some of the limbs out of it because it's gotten a little bit out of hand with sucker sprouts and stuff. We've got to trim it back this winter. Uh, this is an Anna tree. This tree last year produced probably three bushels of apples. Look and see the tree, the small tree there is the tree I, uh, that I've grafted. And in the background of that tree, you'll see another tree back there. That is our flowering crab apple that we use. It's probably 50 feet away from these. We use that tree to pollinate all these other apple trees, and it does a fantastic job.